Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about World Alzheimer's Day. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry working at Nimans, Bangalore. Every year on 21st September, we observe World Alzheimer's Day. Why should we observe this day? The main reason to observe Alzheimer's Day is to create awareness about dementia in public. At the same time to decrease stigma with regard to dementia and also to urge policymakers and politicians to invest in providing care of dementia. At the same time, 80% of the general population do not know what is dementia means. At the same time, treatment gap is 90%. That means, if there are 100 dementia patients in India, 90% of them are not on treatment. Along with this, the biggest challenge is access to treatment is very poor and usually this dementia affects senior citizens approximately 50 lakh population of senior citizens in india are suffering from dementia in that 60 percent belongs to alzheimer's dementia and we have to be very clear that we need to give treatment to senior citizens because not only they are suffering from dementia they have financial issues, family issues, social issues such as maybe property has been taken away or else the family members are abusing them. Hence, there should be a comprehensive plan for providing care to the people who are suffering from dementia. Now the question is what is dementia? Dementia is a syndrome usually chronic characterized by progressive global deterioration in intellect including memory, learning, orientation, language, comprehension, judgment due to disease of the brain. That means it is a syndrome. It has many reasons to have dementia. One of them is Alzheimer's dementia. Across the world, the commonest dementia is Alzheimer's dementia. It is around 50 to 60 percent who are suffering from dementia have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's dementia. So as I mentioned earlier, it is disease of the senior citizen. Here it is a progressively degenerative disease. That means it does not stop. The only way we have to do treatment is to decrease the progression of illness. There is no cure at this point of time. Why is it called as Alzheimer's dementia? The main reason is this disease is named after a scientist, Dr. Elias Alzheimer. This person noticed that there is a illness which is progressively in nature and which affected a woman in 1906. She had problems with regard to memory, language, unpredictable behavior. And when the brain tissue was examined, he found amyloid plaques. Hence, this is, disease is named after that scientist. Now the question is, how common is this Alzheimer's dementia? India's population is 138 crore. In that, 13 to 14 crore populations are senior citizen. In that, 5% of this elderly population are suffering from dementia. That means 50 lakh people are suffering from dementia. In that, 60% is Alzheimer's dementia. That means dementia is a very common illness. And let me be very clear. It is not just 50 lakh people are suffering from dementia. It not only affects the person, it affects the whole family. That means 50 lakh families are suffering because a person is suffering from dementia and this issue needs to be taken into consideration because 5 million families are suffering. It is a huge burden on the family and the community and at large to the nation. We have to understand that 60 to 70 percent of these dementia people requires assistance in activities of daily living. Without assistance they find it very miserable and one person has to dedicate his time 24 bar 7 in providing care for these dementia people. Now the question is what are the signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's dementia? The first and the foremost usually the general people notice about the progressive decline of memory loss. Mood changes such as irritability, anxiety, catastrophic reaction when they are unable to find what they are looking for, unable to identify the family members at the same time difficulty in processing new information 
and difficulty in learning new things, loss of spontaneity and initiative, confusion about time, place, person, communication difficulties, decline in ability to perform routine tasks, that means in activities of daily living, they get confused, they do not know where is the bathroom, they find difficulty in getting the right path, difficulty in recognizing family members, friends, relatives, which triggers catastrophic reaction. At, at sometimes they have shorter attention span, feeling of restlessness, difficulty with reading and writing and numbers, calculation becomes a big t uh, task for them, poor personal hygiene, loss of appetite, personality changes like aggression, mood swings, requires increased assistance with the daily task, completely dependent on other person and sometimes psychotic symptoms. So these are the commonest signs and symptoms which is noticed by the family members. Why do people get Alzheimer's dementia? What happens in brain? The exact cause of Alzheimer's dementia is not known. However, the preliminary finding and research clearly indicates neuron starts degenerating. They lose connection from one neuron to another neuron and eventually these neurons die. Along with this, there is abnormal protein deposit in the brain. They are called as amyloid blocks and tangles. These are seen around the brain cells and these have been attributed for the death of the neurons. And very essentially, it has also been known to be hereditary in nature. And one of the genes which has been clearly marked is E4 version of ApoE genes, which provides instruction for making protein called as apolipoprotein E. And finally, these gene which codes this protein may be the reason for amyloid blocks and tangles and which causes dementia. But at this point of time, we do not know what is the mechanism which causes dementia. We do not know at this point. But however, there is some indication in certain direction. Now the question, who are at risk in developing Alzheimer's dementia? Increasing age, family history, if there is blood pressure, diabetes, if it is obesity is there, history of head injury, substance use and smoking, sedentary lifestyle, poor sleep habits, less formal education are known to cause dementia in the people who are at high risk. How to diagnose Alzheimer's dementia? It is very difficult to diagnose Alzheimer's dementia. In textbook, it is called as diagnosis by exclusion. Assess person's medical and psychiatric history, first and the foremost. Thorough neurological examination, physical examination has to be done. Blood test, urine test, rule out hypertension, various other medical comorbidities. Then brain scan, maybe CT scan, MRI scans are done. Mental status assessment, determining the level of mental deterioration, cognitive function. At the same time, interviewing the caregiver, we will come to know what is the dependency of the person who is suffering from dementia on family members. That is, activities of daily living needs to be assessed. On that basis, the Alzheimer's dementia is diagnosed. As I mentioned, it is diagnosed by ruling out other causes of dementia. Now, as I mentioned, diagnosis by exclusion. What are those dementia which needs to be excluded? Those are substance induced dementia, especially alcohol. If a person is taking for many years, he may develop alcohol induced dementia. Sometimes nutritional dementia is also common. Vascular, wherever a person has hypertension, then there may be strokes, very minor strokes which in the brain which can cause vascular dementia. Normal pressure hydrocephalus, space occupying lesions in the brain, tumors, subdural hematoma, infections like meningitis, encephalitis can also lead to dementia, epilepsy. A person who has uncontrolled epilepsy can develop dementia. Endocrinal causes like Cushing's disease, Addison's disease, hypothyroidism, hypoparathyroidism. So these are the various causes. Chronic renal failure, renal failure and Wilson's disease are also known to cause dementia. What are the treatment of Alzheimer's dementia? There is no cure at this point of time. We have treatment only to slow the process of disease. That means the degeneration which is occurring at very fast rate by giving treatment, we can decrease the process of degeneration. That means there is no cure, only care. 
and also decreasing the process of degeneration. At the same time, we need to provide support to the caregivers, training to the caregivers so that Alzheimer's dementia patients can be given care at home, that is giving care in the community. Sharing the care is very essential when providing care for Alzheimer's dementia. At the same time, we need to know what are those identifiable causes of dementia, identify them and treat them. It may be nutritional, it may be hormonal, if it is epilepsy, substance use, hypertension, diabetes, obesity. But let me be very clear, 60% of dementia are Alzheimer's dementia. Only very fraction of them are treatable causes of dementia. Most of them are non-treatable cause of dementia. But however, rule of thumb is investigate and find whether there is any treatable cause of dementia. If there are none, then we have to go by exclusion and to diagnose Alzheimer's dementia. There are various treatments available. One of the treatment which is commonly used is disease slowing agents, which, which, which I told you. That means there are medications which decreases the degenerating process. They are called as cholinesterase inhibitors. Galanthamine, rivastigmine, donopezil and mamantine. So these medicines are usually given for Alzheimer's dementia patient. Recently, there is a one more important agent has been approved by FDA. That is disease modifying agent which is called as aducanumab. So this is a medication which is a human antibody or also called as immunotherapy that targets beta amyloid plaques and helps to reduce amyloid plaques and hence dementia progression decreases significantly. However, in some of the countries, these medicines are not available. But still, this is one of the promising agent which has been considered in the treatment of Alzheimer's dementia. And very important management is treatment of comorbidities. It may be dementia, it may be hypertension, it may be hormonal uh, variations that needs to be treated. However, majority of the Alzheimer's dementia patients also have mental health morbidities. Maybe mood fluctuation, anger outburst, psychotic symptoms, sexual disinhibition. In such a scenario, mood stabilizers, antipsychotics, benzodiazepines do play a very important role in providing care. By providing care for Alzheimer's dementia, you can decrease the burden on the family members. Now the question is, what are the non-medication treatment of dementia? There are various treatment which are available which are non-medication related. Here, we have to train the family members in providing care at home. There are, they can learn this by few training sessions. That means, in India, we do not have adequate number of trained people to provide care for dementia. The only way to go forward is providing training to the family members and caregivers to provide care at home. One of them is reminiscence therapy. In this, you are going to have old albums, photographs and various other memory triggers which are kept in front of the patient and you will discuss about these issues. Invariably, Alzheimer's dementia in mild and moderate, they do have access to the old memories. They enjoy discussing about their marriage, childbirth, their family members, parents, music and movies, what they have seen those they will be able to remember. So in this, you are going to provide some kind of memory enhancing work. So reminiscence therapy play very essential role. That decreases the memory decline very fast. The next is validation therapy. Invariably, the people who are suffering from dementia will have catastrophic reaction when they are unable to recall their own family member's name. Imagine, husband is suffering from dementia and he is unable to remember his children's name or his wife's name. That catastrophic reaction needs to be decreased. Hence, there is something called as validation therapy. The fo in this validation therapy, the focus is on feelings of the person with the dementia rather than focusing on the confusion and loss of memory. Validation therapy is found to decrease stress, promote contentment and supports the decrease in the behavioral disturbance. That means it suppresses behavioral disturbance. Hence, validation therapy can be easily taught to the family members. But however, few sessions are required and family members need to be committed to learn this therapy. The next one is very essential. Reality orientation. 
here this decreases to this is this reality orientation therapy is done to decrease the confusion among the dementia people so that the behavioral symptoms can be contained by here the family members will put calendars they will be introducing them to newspaper they will be introducing the family members who come them rather than asking tell me what is his name they will orientation to the time date place and also various new things if they are going to see even if it is a old thing they will give orientation to that to the person the next one is cognitive stimulation therapy this can be done easily at home cognitive therapy stimulation is typically delivered in social situation maybe in small group nowadays even in individual therapy is done cognitive based tasks are given maybe puzzles maybe even video games are done at the same time the tablets are used to load certain games and ask them to perform those tasks and also various puzzles can be used this cognitive stimulation decreases the decline of dementia now how to care alzheimer's dementia at home the reason why should we care at home why can't we hospitalize them imagine we have 50 lakh people who are suffering from dementia do we have 50 lakh beds in our india to provide care is the question at the same at the same time we should know the cost of providing care see there are studies which clearly has said they have said that if you are providing care in urban area 3 to 4 lakh rupees per annum is required caring dementia at rural area that means in village 50000 to 1 lakh rupees is required to a family that means it is a huge burden to any family to provide care for dementia people let's understand 50 lakh people are suffering from dementia if you provide 1000 rupees per month or else the family members have to spend 1000 rupees either for medication or the, either for some other purposes that means they require at least in india 500 crore per month just spending 1000 rupees per annum it is 60000 crore that means the family not only suffers because a person is suffering from dementia at the same time the economic burden emotional burden stigma isolation plays a huge role so that means we need to provide care at home and they need to be trained that is the only way to go forward training of caregivers family members task shifting task sharing home visit by healthcare workers nurses visiting at home providing training providing care at sometimes day border is also essential that means in mild and moderate cognitive decline especially alzheimer's dementia they can be left in the day borders places in the daytime where certain activities are done which declines or suppresses the progression of disease to some extent at the same time hiring a nursing person at home so to provide care and long-term care homes to be established when dementia becomes very severe or profound providing care at home becomes impossible so dementia homes should be used even in dementia home if they have to get a professional help either telemedicine can be used or else professionals like doctors geriatric psychiatrists geriatric neurologists or medicine people need to visit them so in such a scenario telemedicine works as a boon two important thing we have to understand in India is rule of thumb is to provide care at home by training the family members or caregivers. That is the only way to go. Now, how to deal with the caregiver stress and burnout? Imagine a dementia patient invariably lives for a period of 9 to 15 years. For a, such a long period, for a caregiver, it's a curse many a time. Hence, we need to provide support to the caregivers. So, how to provide that? First and the foremost is training. Making awareness about dementia. How the progression of disease occurs. Providing stress management to the caregivers and family members. Decrease their expectation. At the same time, sharing the responsibility among the family members plays a crucial role. And when it becomes very severe, institutional care should be planned. And the family members need to socialize. Many a time, because of stigma, they do not go out encourage them for socialization self-help group should be formed within the community this community can share the burden of providing care at the same time 
government has a huge role to provide access to treatment, access to care, economical support to the family members. Imagine a family member is devoting his whole time in providing care. It is almost a professional care. That means 24 bar 7. Hence, caregiver's pension should be nominated at the earliest. Time out. Time breaks need to be given to the caregivers so that the stress do not strikes them. And very essential thing is addressing the guilt. Imagine a son who is providing care. He becomes angry and he may even shout at his the person, his father who is suffering from dementia. So you need to address their stress, address their guilt. At the same time, professional help for the caregivers. Invariably, many of the caregivers develops anxiety, depression and various other psychiatric illnesses. So, regular assessment need to be done to the caregiver to assess whether there is a depression or anxiety. Further, we need to prioritize the dementia at the national level. So, what are those priorities we should have at the national level? There are 10 important plans which has been advocated across the world. The first one is improving the awareness and education of dementia across general population. Once the general population is aware about dementia, that means the one step we have gone forward. The next step is they are aware, that means early diagnosis and treatment can be done easily. Third one is improving the support available at home. That means providing care at home should be the next goal. To provide that care, we need to strengthen and support the available family members and caregivers so that they can provide care at home. At the same time, improve residential and institutional care. Every district should have an institutional or residential care run by the government. That should be one of the goal. So every district should have, if the district is large, that even at the taluk level, it should be made available. Better integration for care pathways and coordination of care should be done. If the care is given at home, so the government nurses or else ASHA workers should visit the home and support the family members. And we need to improve the training of healthcare professionals. Unfortunately, the dementia is not been properly trained at MBBS level, at the nursing level, even at the post creation it is not done. Hence, we need to train all the healthcare professionals across India. And we need to monitor the progression of training and implementation of this plan. And there is, should be a, a commitment to a research, which is culturally adapted and we can plan the care at home. So for that research is required. Recognize the role of innovative technologies such as telemedicine, wearable gadgets can be used to provide care at home. To conclude my dear friends, we need to invest in mental health. There is no health without mental health. So people with Alzheimer's dementia can be cared at home. Adequate training and support is the need of the hour. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.